Cotney Construction Law is dedicated to helping the construction industry in legal, risk, and safety challenges. Welcome to this week's Law & Mortar with John Kenny and Trent Cotney. Welcome to another episode of Law & Mortar. I am Trent Cotney, CEO of Cotney Construction Law, and we have John Kenny, CEO of Cotney Consulting Group with us, uh, as always. And John, this has been a crazy last few days since the election. Um, you know, I, I know you've been incredibly busy, as have I. Um, I've been working closely with our government affairs and lobbying team, and um, it seems like the calls just keep coming in. Um, what are some of the stuff that you're hearing on your end from the business perspective and the, the consulting perspective? Well, I've been, uh, I've had calls in pretty much all parts of the country over the last couple of days, and everybody's very tense and uh, you know, what, what the outcome either way has to do with business going forward. I think uh, what I've been hearing is, are we going to get another stimulus, which who knows? I have no answer to that. Um, what's in it for uh, going forward in businesses? What do we think the economy is going to do? Um, you know, is there going to be a lot of work there? Or is, you know, is there not going to be a lot of work? I mean, it's typical election day angst from the business owners, but unfortunately we don't really have any direction, nor I doubt we will for a while, not just for election results, it just takes time. You, you're either going to have a continuing administration or the way it looks, you're going to have a new administration coming in and everything takes time to uh, change in power and so on. So I think it's going to be uh, two months, pretty much probably what we see right now as far as business goes. I don't expect to see a lot being released or a lot changing before January from what I see talking to it. Uh, most contractors in the Northeast and the Midwest are telling me they have work, but it's less than where it was. And they don't see like an influx either way of not having work. They're bidding a couple jobs, but the backlogs are dropping um, out in the West. They're harder call because they had all those wildfires and everything. They had a lot of things going on just besides COVID and that this year. So they're hoping for a rebound in the, in the winter time, coming out of winter, just based on the fact they've got a lot of pent up work. So Southeast though, I can tell you seems to have, continues to have quite a bit of work with most people that I talk to. So that's how I see it on the business side. You know, on, on the legal side, there's a lot of really interesting issues that we're, we're sort of navigating right now. You know, everyone is still concerned about whether or not we're going to have a legal liability shield to protect against uh, the unintentional exposure to COVID-19. Um, there may be a stimulus package that comes out of this by the end of the year, but if everything is still up in the air, then I don't think that's going to happen. Um, the other thing that's really interesting, John, I know you and I have been talking about it, is originally, you know, Tuesday looked like Republicans were going to control the Senate. Now it's a little bit more of a question mark. You know, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen. That, I think, has caused some of the uneasiness that uh, we're starting to see in Wall Street. Um, you know, big booms in the first few days. Uh, last I looked, I think there was a little bit of uh, uneasiness there. So um, that's going to be something interesting to follow. Um, obviously, some big things coming out of um, the elections that we, we are for certain on. Okay, one is, you know, Florida's minimum wage increase. Um, you know, the uh, law that was passed, the amendment that was passed basically says that um, from now until September of 2026, there'll be a gradual increase up to $15 an hour for minimum wage. And John, why don't you talk a little bit about how that affects the industry? You know, politics aside, you know, and again, I'm no economist, but generally I know if you've got a, a increase in minimum wage, that's going to cause all wages to increase. Yeah, I think uh, there's two steps to this. One is, fortunately, it went over a period of roughly four or five years, um, you know, gradually. So that will help to a point rather than, you know, come January or June, we're, we're facing a $5 increase. But what it's going to do is it raises all levels, uh, especially in the tight market and insurance up uh, or construction up. So what, for example, once we get to that $15 a, a level for any kind of a job, whether it is working at a Wawa gas station or a Target or McDonald's or anywhere, now you're currently at like an Amazon, you're at 18, 19, they're starting for here in the state of Florida. So that's going to go up and we're competing with that group right now in construction, you know, minimum starts 18 to 22 is not heard of now, unheard of now. 
I think we're probably looking at a starting base wage for raw recruits in construction in 2026 will be probably $24, $25 an hour minimum. And of course, then you're going to take your top end foreman, which can range anywhere from 28 to 35 now, depending on the company in the area in Florida. You're probably looking at 40 plus easily on the high end foreman range. So company with 100 people, company with 50 people, you're probably looking at adding a million and a half to two and a half million dollars worth of payroll a year on to where you're at now. So that that's pretty much where you're gonna see it. Plus, I think labor shortage is gonna get even worse because we're going to be competing very hard against air conditioned industries for trying to get people, you know, with the wage being there. So it, it's gonna be interesting to see how it works out. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a good point. And, you know, along those lines, one of the things that uh, has always caused us some concern at least on the legal side, is um, the the changing drug laws. You know, we saw out of this last election that a handful of states went recreational. I think, you know, off the top of my head, I think it was Montana, South Dakota, New Jersey, uh, and Arizona. And there was a couple that went um, medicinal, uh, medical marijuana. But uh, the one that was most surprising of all was Oregon, that uh, not only voted to allow for uh, medicinal uh, magic mushrooms, but also allowed uh, for the decriminalization of the possession of all drugs, okay, no matter what it is. So that is, again, politics aside, um, from an employer standpoint, that makes your life a lot more difficult, right? You, you've got to navigate crew not only in a recreational marijuana state, but in a state that doesn't even view, you know, minor possession as a criminal offense, so good luck having a drug-free workplace. One of the things that I know our employment group has been working hard on already is getting the policies and the procedures in place for when these laws go into effect, most of which are next year. Um, you know, you, you uh, were in operations a lot and you've gone all the way from the, from the roof to the uh, boardroom. What, uh, what do you anticipate for our, our friends out West that they're gonna have to face in states like uh, um, Oregon with these new drug laws passed? Well, it's almost, uh, it's, it's hard enough when you had to deal with it when it was illegal. Um, it, you know, it was there. I mean, coming up through the different uh, decades, it's, you know, been cocaine issues. It's been, you know, heroin issues, alcohol, you name it, it's been there. But uh, of, the, of the drugs, when it's been illegal, it was a lot more hidden, a lot more, you know, less prevalent. I really don't, know where it's going to end up but i can say it's going to be probably a huge workforce issue for them because there's you don't have any consequences up to a certain issue and unfortunately you know when you get into those type of drugs they're talking about it, it is an addictive type product so it's going to spread roofers uh historically have been pretty well in the workforce to the addictive side it, it's just part of life i mean i've seen it every single day so I think from a management side and a company side, uh, they're going to have their hands full. I mean, probably I know you've recommended this when you've done uh, webinars and seminars. Um, you really need to train your foreman and your key personnel how to look for these issues ahead of time and to spot them. And, you, you know, you still have safety problems that come along with this. I think you've got to be able to call quicker an issue and stop, you know, stop maybe the employee from working and go from there. I mean, you know, I know you'll touch more on the legal end of that, but your people have to be trained how to recognize this uh, possible, more than likely potential issue that they're going to face. Yeah, absolutely. You got to get out in front of it. You know, we're, we're always a big proponent of being proactive rather than reactive, you know, toolbox talks, educate your crew on what the new laws are. That's absolutely key. You don't, ignorance is not a defense. So um, they need to understand that what they do in their off hours could potentially impact what they do when they're on and um, they need to understand the ramifications of that you know john one of the things that's that's really interesting is over the last couple of years our, our practice where we do business has expanded significantly um, obviously we've opened a couple of offices in canada but we've got a lot of friends and we work with a lot of contractors and consultants um, throughout the world now and what we're starting to see in some of these areas is the effect of covid19 uh, with the slowdown of construction and, and um, other jobs. Uh, right now, we are working on a development project in the Seychelles, um, you know, which is uh, off the coast of Africa. 
And we've got um, some consultants and other friends that are based in South Africa. And they've, they've told us that, look, construction's pretty much dried up. You know, uh, even before COVID-19, they were seeing weakness. What are you hearing? I know you're, you're heavily involved with the International Federation for Roofing Trades. Uh, what are you hearing across Europe and in uh, some of the areas outside of North America? Well, in uh, Europe, uh, we just had a recent meeting with the IFD, and one of the things we're talking about is when COVID broke and they were back to work, they had a huge backlog, they were very busy. Now COVID's hit again over there. They've got it running rampant. It's just similar to the numbers popping up here. Now they're seeing projects, more, instead of being postponed, they're being put on, for lack of a better term, permanent hold until we get through this because no one's willing to put the investment in. So I think they're facing all through Europe, uh, starting right up through the Russian line all the way over up into England. They're, they're starting to see major slowdowns in construction. They almost did a V straight up, but it's leveling going down. Uh, Canada so far uh, seems to be doing okay. Um, all the numbers up there seem to check for a strong ending to fourth quarter going into first quarter. We were just sitting on the Construction Canada, some of the webinars last week. Um, it's yet to be said, they, but they are very strict. Uh, rules in place that they've kept in place per Providence. So basically what's happened is you're working in a Providence, that's where your work's at. There's very few inner Providence travel because of the 14 day quarantine. So they've got pretty good pockets of construction. Um, you know, so that, that's where we see it going at this point. And, and we are, uh, you know, trying just to kind of give a plug for the next video we got coming out next week. I've got something coming out on the economic outlook here for the states. Uh, where we're at, where we think we're going to go, the three options that are pretty much going to be, and which one of those three may possibly play out. So I do recommend all our viewers when that post here coming probably Monday or Tuesday to take a look into it, and then we'll do some more deeper dives as we come. Because uh, that's going to change just based on what you said. We are not going to have any kind of Senate control through the rest of this year. Um, as of this morning or late afternoon, both Georgia senators are going to be in runoffs. So that means there's two there's two undetermined seats at least through mid-January. So, you know, if the market volatility and everything is, uh, again, taking politics out, like you said, it's still volatile as far as, you know, the economy and the construction or anything getting done goes. Yeah, yeah. One thing I think we're assured of is that uh, those both of those campaigns are probably going to break records for the amount of money spent. Um, yeah. It's, it's going to be nuts, you know. Um, just to, to plug your or your uh, videos again, you know, we are heavy, heavy data driven, especially on the consulting side. So really interested in looking at that. And I want to plug one other thing. You know, we um, are, are working hard with our government affairs team to advocate not only here in the States, but also nationally. Um, we work with, um, you know, renowned lobbyists uh, for the roofing industry, Craig Brightup. And we're going to be doing a webinar on Thursday. It's at three o'clock, right, John? Yeah, three o'clock. Yep. And it's going to be a panel. It's going to be John, myself, and Craig. And we are going to talk about the latest election results, what he is hearing in D.C., uh, what he can expect. And if you would like to attend, you can go to any of our social media pages. You'll see it there. And if you use the code CONSTRUCTION, you will get it for free. Otherwise, it's $10. So... We've already had what last time I looked about 220 people sign up and we just put it up. So I expect started a, posting it today. It's been written a great hit. Yeah, I expect a big turnout and uh, it should be really good. He is absolutely an expert when it comes to this stuff. So um, I'll be able to share the legal side. John will be able to share the business. He'll be able to share the lobbying government side and it should be a, a great webinar. So I want to thank you, John, as always. Appreciate the opportunity to, to talk to you. And uh, for listeners out there, you got any questions for us, let us know. You know, we'd love to answer them. We'd love to hear from people. And uh, stay tuned for our next Lawn Mortar next week. So thank you. See you next week.